Welcome to part four in our series on the specialist pathway. Today we'll be talking about area of knee positions and how these relate to the process of a specialist IMG doctor working in Australia. Hello, I'm Dr. Anthony Llewellyn and I'm here to help you manage your career right here on YouTube. When working with specialists from other countries other than Australia, one of the topics we often cover is the issue of area of knee posts. Area of knee, which is generally abbreviated to AON, is one of many aspects of the Australian healthcare system that's difficult to understand if you come from outside. What is also frustrating is that apart from some notable exceptions, it's also difficult to find out how to apply for an area of knee position uh, and where such positions might actually exist. So I think it's important to make a video on this topic to help with that understanding uh, for specialist IMGs. So as per usual, if any of the content raises further questions for you uh, or something's not quite well explained, um, please leave me a comment or a question in the link below. And if this video is useful, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing and turning on notifications for this channel and the device that you're actually watching me on. So in this video, I intend to cover the following questions and areas. Uh, what is area of need? Uh, how does area of need differ from the specialist pathway? How does an area of need position come about in the first place? How is it called declared? How do you go about finding an area of knee position? Uh, what are the advantages of area of knee positions? And how does this actually affect the specialist assessment process? So firstly, let's answer the critical question of what is area of need and how does an area of need post differ from the specialist assessment pathway, which is the pathway for specialists like IMGs to become recognized as a specialist here in Australia. So an area of need is a location where there is a demonstrated shortage of suitably qualified medical practitioners. An area of need post is a position that is specifically established for an international doctor to work in Australia because it has been difficult to find an Australian doctor to work in that position. So whilst historically area of need positions have been declared for both trainee and specialist roles, they're generally now mainly, not always, but mainly just used to recruit specialists. With the exception that area of need roles are also often declared for IMG doctors to enter into general practice in a training capacity. So area of need positions then vary from the specialist pathway process in two main ways. Firstly, they're not always related to specialist roles, but mostly they are now. Secondly, and more critically, they still require an assessment of the specialist IMG doctor's potential to become a specialist in Australia through the relevant college process. But as part of that assessment, the college will also consider the doctor's suitability for the actual area of knee position that they're being recruited to. Okay, so now you know what an area of knee position is and that it is essentially an add-on option to the specialist pathway. Let's look at a few other aspects of area of need that are worth knowing a bit about. How is an area of need position declared or how does it come about? Well, the authority for declaring such positions actually lies with the state governments of Australia, not the Commonwealth government. Medical practitioners with limited registration for an area of need are working under supervision in an area of Australia where the state government has determined that there is a shortage of medical practitioners for that specialty area. So the, these are usually uh, places that are in rural or remote locations. The state or territory minister for health or their delegate has to declare that the area in which the applicant will work is in an area of need. And the process can vary between jurisdictions, but generally there are couple of main criteria that need to be filled before an area of need position will be approved. First, there must be some reason for the vacancy given uh, along with a consideration on the impact uh, on the community and service delivery um, as well as access to alternate services and other options for delivering care. Uh, basically, it has to be proven that the absence of that specialty is going to have a real impact on the patients. And secondly, there must be some evidence of what's called labour market testing. So basically this involves demonstrating that there have been quite a few attempts already to find suitable candidates amongst the Australian trained doctor pool, but this hasn't been fruitful. Basically you haven't been able to find anyone to do the job from that pool. So for example, attempts at advertising and results of previous recruitment campaigns, that sort of thing. It's important to know that certain doctors can't work under area of need. For fairly obvious reasons, 
if you already have your general registration or specialist registration, you can't apply for an area of need position. You don't need to apply for an area of need position. Also, new applicants who are eligible for the competent authority pathway or who already hold the AMC certificate are also not eligible to apply for limited registration and therefore cannot apply for an area of need position. Again, if you're in these groups, you generally have more options for working in positions uh, and don't need an, necessarily an area of need position to work in Australia. Finding an area of need position. Now, you think with the many doctor shortages in certain parts of Australia, particularly rural and remote areas, it would be relatively easy to find out all the area of need positions. Unfortunately, no central list actually exists. This is because, as I said at the start of the video, the states and territories are both responsible for declaring area of need positions as well as determining how these declarations actually occur. So there's no requirement for these declarations to be listed or reported in any particular manner. So there's no central list. And very few of the states and territories actually publish a list at all. And even when this list is published, it may actually be out of date. Uh, at present, only New South Wales Health reports what purports to be an up-to-date area of need list for both general practice as well as other specialties. Although I've personally found that when you inquire about some of the positions on this list, there's no response or the position has maybe been filled already. Western Australia does have a list, but it's currently under review. And Tasmania is only currently reporting on GP posts with specialist posts also under review. The Northern Territory, South Australia, Queensland, ACT and Victoria all have information about area of need on their respective health service websites but no list that I've been actually able to find of current area of need posts. So what other options are there for finding an area of need position? Well, sometimes a particular job may be actually advertised as being area of need. Here's an example of a radiologist position in Victoria that's advertised on SEEK as an area of need post. But some jobs may also be advertised as seeking or being open to international doctors, and you only really find out that it's eligible for an area of need candidate when you speak to the recruiting person. This can often be the case if they are also hoping still to get a more local candidate, or perhaps a specialist from a competent authority country. Uh, AON jobs are sometimes also posted on college websites. Area of need positions do come with advantages. Okay, so thus far, it seems like identifying an area of need position is becoming more difficult than it's actually worth. Why would an international doctor bother trying to find one in the first place? Well, there are a couple of key reasons why it is in fact worth the bother. The first reason is that an area of need position is a real job. A job which you can apply for and hopefully be appointed to prior to having to deal with those issues around registration and visas. The effect of this is that you enter the specialist assessment process with a specific position that provides the level of supervision that you will likely be required to be given should the college approve you to undergo a specialist assessment period. A number of IMG specialists are now going through the specialist assessment process with no guaranteed position afterwards. So they're both bearing the full financial cost of this process as well as the risk that there's no suitable job at the end of it. In fact, some colleges like the College of Psychiatrists here in Australia will not consider you if you do not have a position offer, probably because they do not want to be in a position of granting false hope to someone uh, in the circumstance that they're approved but don't have a job to go to. So the second reason for obtaining an area of new position is that, generally speaking, if you have secured such a position, then you have an employer who will support you through the process of applying for specialist assessment and your registration. This generally extends to things like paying for the cost of the actual assessment process, which can be substantial, and will also extend to the costs of college supervision if you're given the go-ahead to undertake a period of assessment. One key difference between area of need and the specialist assessment process is that with area of need, you start off by applying for a job. This job has been declared already as to be suitable for an IMG specialist, and so if you're able to be successful in being offered that position, it's likely that you're also a strong candidate for the specialist assessment process. Otherwise, the selection panel would probably not have offered you the position in the first place. Before you take up the position, 
However, you must still be assessed by the relevant specialty college to determine your suitability for specialist assessment, just like any other specialist assessment pathway process. The process is largely identical in that it is a dual assessment process. The college reviews your general suitability or comparability, as we've shown in other videos, as well as your suitability for the actual area of need position that you've been recruited to. So you may have to fill in a little bit more paperwork. There may be an additional fee, there actually is generally an additional fee, but the interview questions are likely to be largely the same. So what areas of medicine are in need in Australia? Well, wait long enough and most specialties and subspecialties will be listed for an area of need position somewhere in Australia. But here are some of the more common specialties uh, that come up based on reviewing the past Tasmania list and the current New South Wales and Western Australia lists. General practice, radiology, psychiatry, physicians or internal medicine specialists, particularly general physicians, various surgical specialties, ophthalmology, anaesthetics, emergency medicine, and dermatology. So that's pretty much covered a lot of medicine. Area of need in general practice is slightly different. Doctors applying for registration to work in general practice must provide evidence of a minimum of three years of full-time equivalent experience working in general practice or primary care. If a doctor has had their experience formally assessed by the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners, the RACGP, or by the Australian College of Rural and Remote Medicine, ACRRM, this assessment is reviewed by the medical board. Otherwise, the medical board assesses a doctor's experience as part of their application for registration. There is a minimum requirement that evidence from one of these two colleges confirms that at least three years full-time equivalent experience working in general practice or primary care has occurred. So unless you're applying for specialist assessment as a general practitioner, you'll also need to sit what's called a pre-employment screening clinical interview or PESCI. And I'll try to do a video about that at some point. So there's an uh, overview of the area of need process, how it relates to the specialist assessment pathway. Hopefully it's answered a whole lot of your questions about this option. As I say, it is a good option if you can identify a position uh, if you're looking to work as a specialist doctor here in Australia. Once again, if you like this video, leave me a like below. If you've got any questions, leave a question in the comments. If you've got any questions or comments, also leave them in the description below. Please subscribe and turn on notifications for the channel and your device, and I will see you in the next video.